Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is rock, paper, scissors, and I cover this in lesson 3.6 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. I am sure that all of you watching this video right now have at some point in your life played rock, paper, scissors, so I am not going to bother with the background story, and rather I will just show you the strategic form of the game and we'll go from there. So two players, three strategies apiece, rock, paper, scissors. If both players play the same thing, they both get uh, nothing. Essentially, it's a draw. And if the player plays the item that beats the other player, then the winning player gets one and the losing player gets negative one. So it's a very simple, straightforward, strategic form game. It reflects exactly what you've been playing in your life, where you can either win, lose, or draw, and you get the idea. So the question here is not just how do we play rock, paper, scissors, but how do we play rock, paper, scissors in equilibrium? And the first question I want to ask you is, are there any pure strategy Nash equilibria here? Think about that for a moment. I think by virtue of the fact that you've played rock, paper, scissors before in your life, you'll know the answer to this question, but you can also reason through this on your own as an aspiring game theorist. So just think about that for one moment, and now I will go ahead and answer the question. There is clearly no pure strategy Nash equilibrium, and we can appeal to a very simple cycling argument to get through this. Imagine that you're playing rock. If that's the case, I want to play paper. But if you're playing paper, then I want to switch to playing scissors. And if I'm playing scissors, you want to switch to playing rock. But if you're playing rock, I want to switch to playing paper. And if I'm playing paper, then you want to play scissors. And if you're playing scissors, then I want to switch back to rock. And we've gotten into a full loop here. And so that takes care of every case to look for a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. There isn't one. Which means we're going to have to look for Nash equilibria in mixed strategies. And I want to refer back to matching pennies and get some intuition about what has to happen in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of this game. Well, the lesson for matching pennies was when you have all outcomes are either equally good or equally bad, then random randomness can't be beaten. If you're randomizing between both of your strategies with equal probability, then the best your opponent can do in expectation is to hope to draw with you. And so perhaps the same sort of idea would be effective in rock, paper, scissors, where instead of just mixing between two strategies, you mix evenly among all three. So you put probability one third on rock, probability one third on paper, and probability one third on scissors, just like I have this here. Is this a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium? Well, the answer is yes, and it's pretty easy to check on this because all we have to do is calculate each player's expected utility for each of his pure strategies, and we'll see that his expected utility is going to be equal in all of those cases, and so he doesn't have a profitable deviation. He can't change his strategy and do better no matter what he plays, and so he's indifferent between all sorts of strategies, including this mixture, which means this is a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So just to quickly check on this, let's do this for player one's payoffs. Player one, if he plays rock, will get uh, payoff of zero uh, with probability one third if player two plays rock. With probability one third, she'll play paper and he'll get negative one. And with probability one third, she'll play scissors and he will get one. So this is one third times zero plus negative one third plus positive one third. These two cancel out and that's zero. And so that's just equal to zero. And it's going to be the same thing down here where now he's getting one with probability one third, zero with probability one third, and negative one with probability one third. Those all cancel each other out. And so this payoff for player one playing paper is also equal to zero. And that's also the case in the final instance where if he plays scissors, he gets negative one with probability one third, one with probability one third, and zero with probability one third. Those all cancel each other out and he earns zero in expectation. And so this mixture between one third or among one third, one third, one third for all the strategies leaves each player indifferent among all three of his or her strategies. And so that gives us this mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. And that's great. So we kind of guessed what the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium would be of this rock paper scissors game based off, of, based off of our experience with the matching pennies game but that's a problem we should know this is going to be a problem because we saw that in the matching pennies game it was really easy when everything was symmetric but once we switched over to that mixed strategy algorithm game where some outcomes were better and some outcomes were worse than other outcomes we couldn't just easily guess what the mixed strategy nash equilibrium is so that's going to be the same problem here when we modify this rock paper scissors game from the standard you get one if you win, you get negative one if you lose, and you get zero if you draw, we're going to run into some difficulties 
figuring out what that mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is going to be. So imagine I just made a minor modification here and I switched it over to this, where instead of getting one and negative one, if you get a paper rock outcome, then the winner here, the guy playing paper gets two and the loser, the guy playing rock gets negative two. So essentially it's really good for you if you're playing paper and your opponent's playing rock, but it's also really bad for you if you're playing rock and your opponent's playing paper. So that's going to completely change things around. It's no longer the case that you're indifferent here because paper is going to be a really good strategy. Imagining that your opponent is going to mix between each or among each strategy with probability one third, then the expected utility of playing paper is going to be two times one third, zero times one third, and negative one times one third. That comes out to being a positive one third. So that's beneficial to you. You're getting more from that than if you were to play rock instead and say, get zero with probability one third, negative two with probability one third, and positive one third uh, with, well, positive one with probability one third. That actually sums to negative one third, which is strictly worse for you than if you'd played paper and gotten positive one third. So this indifference is no longer fulfilled when you make this slight tweak to the game and we're left without being able to easily figure out what the Nash equilibrium is. And so the rest of what this unit is going to be covering is how to resolve this problem. We need to generalize that mixed strategy algorithm to more than two strategies. And so that's what we're going to be doing for the rest of the unit. And that actually wraps up this video. We will start fixing this problem and resolving this problem in the next video when we talk about a key little trick with symmetric zero-sum games that is applicable to rock, paper, scissors, and a whole bunch of other types of games too. So join me in that next video and take care until then. Bye now.